Today, I wanted to share with you kind of like a case study of one of my projects. I wanted to show you kind of like the entire process from the first phone call to pre-production, production, and post-production, just so you can see and have an idea of kind of how I work with my clients uh, and uh, kind of what I bring to the table. And so this, uh, this is a project from the Cosmopolitan Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. It's a few years old. Um, it, it's not something recent, but it's a great example. So uh, let me show you a little bit of the video and then we can jump right in. So the Cosmopolitan initially called me to ask to create a training video, but really, literally what they said to me was, we're the Cosmopolitan, we don't want a training video. Uh, and so what they were saying is, we want a training video that represent who we are, that follows the brand, that, that, that continue that messaging of who the Cosmopolitan is, even though this was for internal purpose. And so what I did is I went online and, and kind of refresh my memory of, of all their messaging, all the brand messaging that they've had out there. So I watched a lot of TV commercials and that was the time where they were doing all their campaigns on uh, the Cosmopolitan was the right amount of wrong. And so uh, I wanted to use all those commercials as inspiration uh, so that I could pitch something to them that would make sense. And one commercial I remember watching really stood out to me because they threw away kind of like all the rules of design. They had this thing where every word that was projected on the screen was of different color, different font, different size. And, and again, that's kind of unusual. Typically in design, you, you stick to a specific font, a specific color, a specific size. And so they kind of tossed that out and I really enjoyed it. I thought this could really work with the training that they wanted to do. Um, and so Eventually, uh, we met again, and, and that's when I pitched this concept of, can we show a couple enjoying a suite at the Cosmopolitan and then rewind to the process of getting that suite ready by the housekeeping team uh, before the couple arrives? And they really liked it. They, they thought that was a great way of doing it because th then it, it gave them the, the freedom to kind of show... Uh, the edge and the sexiness in the beginning by having this couple kind of enjoying the suite and then transition to the actual portion um, that they wanted to, which was the training. There was really one shot that they wanted, um, which was a sunset shot of the couple on the balcony looking over the Bellagio's fountain. And so basically we worked the schedule backward from that point. So we find out, okay, sunset is at whatever, like 6 p.m. or 6.30. Uh, we need, you know, whatever, 20 minutes uh, to set up for that shot. Um, and so we need to be ready, you know, we need to be on the balcony at 6 p.m. to be ready to shoot at 6.30 at sunset or whatever. And so uh, we kind of worked the schedule backward. And I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly, but I think we started production like at 3 p.m. Uh, or maybe 2 p.m. or something like that and um, we shot until 9 p.m. The casino is in full swing. Wherever I went uh, was okay with them, but, but they were not gonna uh, stop uh, customers or cars or people playing or, or anything. So we had to be pretty nimble, pretty quick, uh, and try to be as, as um, non-intrusive as possible, especially because I didn't want um, people to be staring at the camera. And so uh, this was shot actually with a really small setup. This is, again, this is a little older. So this is the Sony FS700 um, on a Ronin 1, um, the first really big Ronin. And 
I did those shots, like the the car and them walking through the lobby. Those were the first things we did and kind of got those out of the way before we went up to the suite. And I, I really didn't have too much of a, a concept of, of how I wanted to do the move. Um, I just asked the driver to come straight at me and, and I would move away from, like I would move around, but for him to just keep coming and trust that I would get out of the way. And I've always enjoyed using the Ronin uh, or any gimbal uh, in a way that kind of um, goes over certain elements just to kind of bring uh, depth into the shots. And so I started, like the car started coming and he was coming really slow, uh, but I started going towards the car with the, the cam- with the camera really, really low. Uh, and as the car came, came close, then I, I raised the camera to kind of have the hood go under the camera and I found myself just going back down right where that headlight was uh, without really thinking about it. And then when I saw it in the viewfinder, uh, I was like, wow, this is perfect as far as uh, using that light um, and, and the effect that it was giving me. So I believe that was shot with the 14 millimeter lens. And so I think I did that twice, maybe three times. Uh, it was shot in slow motion at 240 frames per second. Um, and I just did that move. Um, I think I did a couple of other moves after that to try something different, but I, I knew from, from the very first movement that that was the move that I wanted. And so that was great. And then um, we just had the car uh, pulled to the side and just got a really quick shot of um, the lady's feet coming out of the car. Uh, same thing, kept the Ronin really low, um, followed her a little bit. And then we did the walking through the lobby. And I think we did that one just twice. Um, you can see there's a couple of people staring at the camera. Um, we try to find uh, breaks in, in the flow of people where we could have a kind of like an open uh, lobby area. And then I'm really tall. So I know people have said, oh, this you're on the jib and I'm not. It's literally just me on the Ronin, but I'm six foot eight. And then I raise my hand and, and I'm almost at nine feet. So uh, it just worked out really well that way. Same thing. It was shot at 240 frames per second. And I didn't, I don't believe I knew um, that I wanted to like ramp up the the speed uh, at that point. Like when I pitched the project, I don't remember, I don't think, I don't believe I had that vision of wanting to change speed uh, throughout the, the video. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but um, and so th- those were the first two shots that after that, we just went up to, to the suite. Um, and it, you know, at that point it was fairly simple, uh, pretty, pretty small, um, uh, space, but, but, you know, I needed like four, three or four shots of the couple getting ready to enjoy a glass of wine, being on the balcony for the, for the sunset, getting into a bathtub, the shot of the, the towel in, in the hallway, I really don't like. I didn't like the lighting. I didn't have any control over anything. And that's a shot that they added um, on the spot that they were like, oh, we need we need to show that. I didn't have a lot of options and, and it just ended up being a really flat, not very exciting shot, but that's okay. Um, and then, and then I, you know, I was done with the two actors and then I had uh, two housekeepers. We went through their normal routine of like, okay, what, what do you typically do? And they have a very strict... Uh, flow that they follow and that was the training right like they they wanted to show they call him loop and you'll see you see in the video that i use the same term so it shows loop one here's what you do loop two here's what you do and they had some very specific shots or very specific specific things that needed to get done outside of the loop like for example like uh the shot of of the housekeeper like turning the remote those are intentional like that. Those are the things that make the Cosmo the Cosmo is, is those items have to be in very specific position in the room when you come in. And so it was important for us to show all those small details. And so we used that, that rotation movement on all those close-ups. We were either on the gimbal or on the track. I had a small manual track. And then the post-production process started. And um, I think what happened... And, you know, it doesn't always work that work out that way, but sometimes it does where um, pretty early on, especially with a project like that, I need to identify the soundtrack um, because that's kind of going to give me the rhythm of the edits. And so, you know, it's that long process of going through 
uh, songs after songs to, to kind of see what hit. And then um, I don't I don't remember where I, I found it, but but this I listened to this song and I, I was like, this is it. Um, you know, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have experienced the same thing where you found the right song and you know right away like that's the right song. So um, so then it was really starting to um, build the that first sequence um, based on that music and realizing that a lot of those movement, especially when they're shot at 240 frames are, are very long. Like that move across the car with the gimbal is, is very long. The ramping of the speed kind of played with that edge that the Cosmopolitan wanted to portray. We see her in slow motion, like we see her a foot in slow motion coming out of the car. But as soon as that foot hit the ground, boom, it goes in um, accelerated motion uh, for two things. One, to speed up the move and, and the shot, but but to also keep up with with the song and then to add to the the feel and, and the identity and the brand that, that the Cosmopolitan wanted to portray. And then using the fonts, colors, and size of the text for all the, the call of action that they wanted. All those were built on the beat of that particular song. And so it was a lot of work. I mean, it was, it was tedious to, to hit all those beats. Hopefully that helps you. Hopefully that encourages you to uh, continue to build yourself as an expert in your field so that you can express and talk to your clients in a way that make them feel comfortable as far as your level of expertise, knowing that they hire the right person, that you can deliver uh, on the promise and on the expectation that they have. I think that's always been part of the success for me. It's to find ways to add value to my clients beyond just what they pay for. And so I would encourage you to continue to grow, continue to become experts in your field so that your clients feel comfortable uh, hiring you for project after projects. They know that they're going to get more than what they pay for. Um, and so that's kind of how I've run my business over the years. And so far, it's it's been working. So uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching until the end. I really appreciate it. If you're interested, uh, you can download my free camera setting cheat sheet. It's down below in the comment section or in the description. And um, I'll talk to you soon. Happy filming.